program is designed to strip the clothes off of well-dressed lies. And there's a bunch of well-dressed lies running around here. I would advise you that if you're looking for a well-dressed lie that people are pawning off at the truth, that you go listen to another program. This is Elder Ajabu, your most truthful talk show host in America. If you want a well-dressed lie, then go listen to Sean, uh, whatever his name is, ha handyman, uh, handkerchief head, something. Go listen to him or, 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 or his big brother who's sick today, uh, Rush uh, Limp Balls. Go listen to them. They are very, very good at telling uh, well-dressed lies and pawning them off as the truth. But if you listen to this program, you're going to get the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the butt-naked truth. Because Elder Ajabu is unbought, unbossed, and unafraid of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the but naked truth. I'm telling you, you are listening to the most truthful talk show host in America. Today, I want to deal with the term Kuji Chagalia. And I'll define that. And I want to deal with Kuji Chagalia in relationship to the discussion that's going on about reparations. We will talk about reparations. We'll talk about this group that has organized itself, ADOS, uh, Americans, American Descendants of Slavery. Imagine that. We're going to delineate that. But first of all, I want to talk about that, like I said, in reference or in relationship to Kuji Chagalia. Kuji Chagalia is the second principle of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a seven-day celebration that happens at the end of the year from December 26th to January 1st, and it was put together by Mylana Ron Karinga uh, for black people to regain our African roots. Kujichagalia means to define ourself, name ourself, speak for ourselves instead of being defined, named, and spoken for by others. We need to embrace that. Because if we embrace that, then what that means is we have matured to where that we're not looking for other people to do for us that which we ought to be doing for ourselves. When you talk about reparations, what is reparations? Well, I looked that up. Reparations is defined as uh, for slavery is the idea that some form of compensatory payment needs to be made to the descendants of Africans who have been enslaved as a part of the Atlantic slave trade. This group, this organization, ADOS, Americans Descendants of Slavery, that is what they're pushing for. They're pushing for reparations. But uh, I, I question not their efforts, but the language that they are using to define themselves. American descendants of slavery. If we were Americans, would we need reparations? I'm, 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 just, I'm just asking, and I'm trying to provoke thought, because I looked up their, 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 their page on Facebook, 
and it looks like some young people who got plenty of energy, but they, they, they need some guidance in my humble opinion, you know, because if we were Americans, we wouldn't need reparations. I mean, uh, in 1857, there was a ruling by the United States Supreme Court. Y'all know Dred Scott. In that ruling, they were trying to determine where people of African descent, people that were enslaved uh, here in America, people of African descent that were enslaved here in America, whether we were citizens or not. They ruled we were not citizens, and the Chief Justice, uh, Roger Taney, said that yes, people of African descent have rights, but none that white people are bound to respect. So, so we, we weren't citizens, and, 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 and by law, we were not citizens. We weren't bought here as citizens. When we got here, we weren't citizens. And today, how we're treated, uh, it's hard to, to, to uh, conclude that we are citizens, so why would you call yourself an American uh, and you had to seek reparations? Now, <laughs> funny enough, now, Taney made that ruling in 19, or 1857. In 1862, Abraham Lincoln outlawed slavery in the District of Columbia, you know, Washington, D.C. And so he made the 900 slaveholders in Washington, D.C. give up their slaves, and the federal government paid the slave owners $300 per slave that they emancipated. They paid them re reparations. They repaired them. They said that, look, you're going to lose labor because them Negroes ain't going to be working for free no more. And if they're not going to be working for free, we're going to give you $300 for each one of them because you're going to miss their labor. Now, now look at that. They paid the slave owner and they told the slave, huh, Buddy, you own your own. I, I, I'm telling y'all, I'm unbought, unbossed, and unafraid of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the butt naked truth. If you can't stand the truth, I done told you to go look to one of them people that's going to give you a well-dressed lie. There will be no lies told on this program. You are listening to the most truthful talk show host in America. How, and I'm telling you, this is the truth. The government who, who, who ADOS, uh, Americans, descendants of slaves, uh, who they are, uh, uh, are addressing, want the government to give reparations to descendants of, of, of slavery when the government already done told you, uh, you, you're not a citizen. We're not going to teach you as a citizen. Yes, you got rights. None of the white folks are due to respect. And five years after that ruling, they emancipate slaves in Washington, D.C. and give the slave owner money, but give the slave, uh, all right, yon, yon. Five years later, General William T. Sherman, January 16, 1865, he signed Special Field Order Number 15 that says that when people of African descent are freed from slavery, that we should get 40 acres and a mule. See, we don't need to ask for reparations. All we need for, for, for the government to do is follow the law. The president, Lincoln, approved us to have 40 acres in the mule. 
And 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 I mean they defined it so well. Let me let me listen to you. Today we commonly use the phrase 40 acres and a mule, but few of us have read the order itself. Have you read it? Don't worry, I'm getting ready to read it for you. The order says is in three parts, and, and section one bears repeating in full. The islands from Charleston south, the abandoned rice fields along the rivers for 30 miles back from the sea, and the country bordering the St. John's River, Florida, are reserved and set apart for the settlement of Negroes now made free by the acts of war and the proclamation of the President of the United States. They had set aside land specifically so that we could get at least 40 acres in the mule so that we had land in order to uh, define ourselves, name ourselves, speak for ourselves, feed ourselves, house ourselves, educate ourselves. It was the law. And that was back in 1862. Now we're in 2019 and we're still asking for reparations. We don't have to ask for reparations. All we need to ask for the government to do is follow the law. Look, section two specifies that these news communities, moreover, listen to this, would be governed entirely by people of African descent on the islands and in the settlements hereafter to be established. No white person whatever unless military officers and soldiers detailed for duty will be permitted to reside and the sole and exclusive management of affairs will be left to the people of African descent. Lord have mercy. Give us the land. Follow the law. We don't need to be uh, uh, named a, a, an American. And all that is a word. If, if, if we are Americans, then give us what the law said that we were supposed to do. William Sherman, ain't that his name? William T. I left out the T. William T. Sherman, Sherman at the behest of the president, said that we ought to get 40 acres and a mule. And they ain't through. It said by the laws of war and orders of the President of the United States, the Negro is free and must be dealt with as such. That was 1862. 2019, we still enslaved. Yeah, we just a high class, well kept slave. See. Who was it? Harriet Tubman. She said that she could have freed more of us if we only realized that we were enslaved. Now, the brother walking around with, in, in, in tattered clothes, living in a lean-to, uh, getting a chance to eat the, the bowels of the pig, uh, work from can't see in the morning to can't see at night, don't get no money for it, and he didn't even know that he was enslaved. Now they done stepped up their game. They let you go to work uh, in the morning, get off in the evening, and you can see, give you a little money. Once you pay, get your money and you pay for your housing, you pay for your clothing, you pay for your transportation, you pay for your food, and you hardly ain't got nothing else to pay for anything else. So you just a well-kept slave that gets a paycheck. So how are you an American if, 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 if in this day and age, we are in the same situation we can get kicked down, shot down by the police, nobody held accountable. We go try to get a loan from the bank, can't get one. Want to start a business, can't get a small business loan. Housing that they try to put us in is inferior. Vehicles that we ride in, mostly used. Most of us can't afford a, a, a brand new car. We do, then we got to juggle between the brand new car payment and the uh, rent or, or the mortgage. 
you're just a well-kept slave. And Harriet Tubman's words are true uh, today as they were then. If we only understood that we are enslaved, then more of us would be about being free. So, so what happened? $300. The <laughs> Democrats <coughs> running for president said, oh yeah, I support reparations, but uh, I wouldn't give out no money. Well, when, 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 when we were supposedly uh, emancipated in Washington, D.C., they gave the slave owner Money, $300 in, 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 in uh, 1800 is about $6,000 now. So why not give every man, woman, and child of African descent $6,000 like you gave the slave owner when you emancipated this? I'm just saying. Or, 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 or give us the 40 acres in the mule, that land that, that's in the, uh, the second section of, of, of Special Order 15, it's still there. Give us that land. Give us that 40 acres. We don't need the mule. We'll get a tractor. Give us the, the we don't, don't give me no mule. I'll take a deer. John Deere, <laughs> but don't give me no mule. You know, I'll take uh, International Harvester, but don't give me no mule. I don't want no mule. I got to give him hay and then he gonna do his business all over the place. No, give me something, I gotta put some gasoline in. Let me work with that. And give me the six grand. Give me the six grand or the 40 acres. But the, you, you got people running for office who are talking about <clears throat> they ain't going to give us no money, but they want to give us a tax credit. Lord, help me today. Look at this. Over the last week, Senator Kamala Harris of California, Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, and former Housing and Urban Development Secretary Julian Castro spoke of the need for the U.S. government to reckon with and make up for centuries of stolen labor and legal oppression. But instead of backing the direct compensation of African Americans for uh, legacy of slavery, the Democratic candidates are talking about using tax credits and other subsidies. Don't give me no tax credit. Give me some paper or give me some land or give me some paper and give me some land. Do not give me a mule. I don't want no mule. Give me a tractor with the implements and some gasoline. That's what we need. And, and if they're serious about doing something, see, so you got you got to watch the language. And this is this is the the point I want to make to them youngsters that are pushing, and, and and they should push. But you can't you can't you can't short uh, circuit yourself. If you call yourself an American descendant of slavery, you just done killed all your African history. We can't do that. We can't, we can't start our legacy at slavery. No. That way you, uh, uh, you, you act like that you're supposed to be oppressed. If you want to, who is that says that? John Henry Clark. He says that if you want people to accept oppression, first of all, you must persuade them that they are supposed to be oppressed. And they use religion to do that. Oh, Ajapu, did you say that? Yes, I did. I'm unbought, unbossed, and unafraid of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the butt naked truth. And Lord knows I'm God fearing. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna uh, uh, practice a religion 
that says that if you, you a slave, be a good one. No. And that's what the white folks was teaching us and saying that that's what Jesus said. Jesus ain't saying that. He said he came to bring a sword. He said he came to relieve oppression. He said that he came to make everybody equal participating citizens. Now, he didn't say it like that, but that's what he said. That's the Jesus I serve. That's the Jesus I follow. That's the one that's, that have been burnt unto a furnace. Uh, that's about like, well, that's darker than me. I mean, that's cold black. That's, that's, that's like this hat. That's cold black. So how did Jesus on the Sistine Chapel in the Pope's place, how did he become white? With a little boy on his arm. How did that happen? As much as the Bible speaks against homosexuality, you got Jesus depicted on the walls and the, the ceilings of the Sistine Chapel like he's a pedophile. A job who did you? I done told y'all I'm unbought, unbossed, and unafraid of the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the butt naked truth. So, 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 young people, when you're talking about the language to push for 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 reparations, I'm not saying don't push, but don't define yourself as something that you're not. You're not an American. They don't treat you as an American, but and, and you don't you don't care. Treat you with respect. Follow the law. And if you respect yourself, then they will respect. If, if we respect ourselves, then they will make the adjustment. When you talk about these black people who, 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 who are talking about reparations, you got to be careful with the language. What am I saying? Look at the 13th Amendment. The 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution was supposed to abolish slavery. But it didn't abolish it. And, it, and, it, and, and if you read it, and, I, and I, I wish I had it here, you know, but it says all slavery is abolished. There shouldn't be no slavery in the United States of America except that you be duly convicted of a crime. And so then they said, oh, that's the way to keep slavery in effect. Yeah, we'll tell them that we eradicated it. But what we'll do is, is not only uh, 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 tell them that, but we'll know different. Here, here, here. See, I got, I got a producer that's on top of things. He done gave it to me. This is what the amendment says. He says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except, and you got to listen to the exception clause as punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So what they said is they can enslave you if they convict you of a crime. So what do they do? If you look at the statistics, who do they convict uh, disproportionately in this country? You and me. Because they want to enslave us. Slavery is still in, a pay, in, in effect. So if you want to talk about uh, reparations, you got to be careful that they'll tell you and use that term. And in all the uh, circumstances, they'll be uh, giving you a well-dressed lie. I tell you, I'm unbought, unbossed and unafraid of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the butt naked truth. You are listening to the most truthful talk show host in America. So when you talk about Kamala, Harris, Elizabeth, Warren, Corey, Booker, don't let them hoodwink you by using the term uh, reparations and then come talking to you about a tax credit. 
A tax credit uh, helps everybody. We're talking about a program indigenous specifically directed toward people of African descent in this country who were in, whose forefathers and foremothers were enslaved. See, every, they, they always want to tell us, well, we want to help all the people and we ain't got no problem with you helping all the people, but all the people wasn't enslaved. So that makes us particular. That means that there is a particular solution to solve that problem. Don't, 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 don't give us a problem that, that addresses everybody's problem and just throw us in there. No. You didn't throw them in when we was enslaved. They were not there uh, with that mule in, 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 in 1800s. We had a mule, maybe. And I'm telling you, I tell you what, if you want to throw them into the slave thing, give us the 40 acres in a, uh, give us the 40 acres and the $6,000 and give them the mule. I, I ain't got no problem with them having the mule. But don't give me no mule. I want a deer. I want old John deer. I want international harvester. Don't, don't give me no mule. Give that to the people that you trying to lump in with us. I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm sick of that language and you got to watch them. You think that they on the up and up and they ain't on the up and up because slavery is still in effect in America, legally. The 13th Amendment legalizes slavery in America if they take you through that rigged system and, 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 and Trump got something with that. It ain't rigged against him, but it is rigged against us. For those of you that have been caught up in the justice system, and when you talk about African-American males, that's one out of three. If you see three males, one of them been caught up in the system. And he knows that is rigged. I know personally that is rigged. I done been convicted of stalking a white woman, and Lord knows I ain't... I, it's hard for me to walk behind a, a, a white woman, let alone stalk her, any woman. And I'm going to get into that a little more later. Buckle up. It's going to be a rough ride. But I'm just talking about uh, uh, the people, the youngsters who have the, and, and see, they started out as, as, as what did they start out as? Uh, they, 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 their name they changed the name from Breaking Brown family to, to, to uh, the uh, Breaking Brown. And then they moved from Breaking Brown to ADOS, American Descendants of Slavery. Well, you need to change your name again. African Descendants of Slavery. You got to grab your roots. You got to claim your roots. You cannot uh, 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 love the tree if you don't love the root of the tree. So I'm, 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 I'm just sharing with you. And, 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 and you're right. <clears throat> I didn't get into that, but let me see if I can get in it right quick. When you ask Joy Reid to stop maligning your name, every Sunday, excuse me, every Saturday, at 3 o'clock, we do voters' education. Martin Luther King fought and died for us to have, or fought and won us the right to vote. Now we must learn how to use it. Every Saturday, 6250 West 38th Street, 3 o'clock, you've been listening to Elder Emoja Ajabu, your host for after Naked truth, unbought, unbossed, and unafraid of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the bud naked truth. The most truthful talk show host in America. You know I ain't got but one question for you. You ready? Images, 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 images.
This is TonsNextTV.com.